Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about affording Magic the Gathering cards, uh, and this is an issue that I think I wanted to talk about. I think the the amount of money that you need to get into Magic should be lowered. Uh, there should not exist these 1,000 decks in Modern, $1,000 decks in Modern. Uh, there shouldn't exist a $800 deck in Modern. These prices should just be much, much lower. You should be able to, and now you can get Tamagoy for uh, 70 bucks, maybe it drops to 50, like it will still continue to drop into 70 dollars right now as of recording of this video, it can drop to 50 and then probably go back up again before we reprint it into oblivion. I would not be upset at all uh, having owned the play sets of Tamagoyfs if Tamagoy was reprinted as a rare from a mythic and I think that would really tank its price to the point that it would be 25 dollars or under. Now affording magic one of the things that you have to understand about the secondary market is it's very ugly. Um, it's not something that you would see in too many places as aggressive as it is, uh, mainly because it's a free market. There's no regulations. Uh, the only thing that scares investors in this particular market is Wizards of the Coast doing something like reprints. So Modern was never a format you could invest in because of reprints. And from day one, investors knew this. They knew that this particular format, the whole purpose of having Modern and forgetting Legacy, and people will say, I hate Legacy. I, that's not true. That is not true. I just don't have anyone to play with. So for me, Legacy, like honestly, I haven't played Legacy in a year or two. There's no one in Houston with a Legacy deck like for me to play with, that I would want to play with. A lot of times legacy players are more entitled, they're less fun to play with. I don't want to deal with, you know, or they each they know each other for like 10, 15 years. I've never been part of that clique here because I have been moving, because uh, I only lived in Houston for probably five years. So that's not part of my, that's not part of what I want to do. I don't think that if I go to a legacy event, I will have fun at the event. And I've gone to a few ones when I first came here. I had a, I had a binder of Force of Wills when I first came to Houston, and that no longer is true. I do have some Force of Wills, lovely Force of Will altars. Um, they've all been altered at this point. So, affordable magic cards is very important to this game. Modern is supposed to be affordable. It, the only way you can get it to be affordable is reprints. So when people say, oh, I lost my investment, I lost my collect, it never should have, you never should have thought about it that way because the whole purpose of this format was that they could reprint it to as many of them as they wanted. Now, you did get mixed signals from 2013 when they kept saying, collectors, we gotta protect the collectors. I mean, they literally said that over and over again that they would uh, make sure that your collection is protected somehow. Um, but, and then prices, you know, it got to the point that vendors in the secondary market, you can only see this happen one play, one card game, Magic Gathering, when this happened. Late, uh, GP, Las Vegas, all the vendors are in the room and they artificially spiked the price of Tomogorf. They literally controlled the price of Tomogorf in that one single conference room. That to me is insane that a group of people can do that um, at such a big event. It, it doesn't make any sense, but that's exactly what they did. They decided to buy every copy of Tomogorf at X amount of dollars and any t copy of Town Ward less than X amount of dollars, they would just snap out. They would snap them all up, and, and then that's why when the event was over, although you had more Town Ward just come into the market tons, the price of Town Ward went up because everyone who went to the event just sold their Town Wars. That is a very, that's very bad in my opinion. That is very bad. That, that, um, it, it's unregulated. It's not like a stock, it's not like a bond, it's not like any of these traditional investment vehicles because you have government regulation. Here, the only regulation is Wizards of the Coast and before Modern Master 2017, they were doing a bad job regulating. The only way they can regulate it is if they release more, more Tamagorks, more Lilies, more Snaps. 2000, uh, Modern Master 2015 was an epic disaster. It was terrible set. I'm not even, when you compare these two, right, you're like, Okay, so this one has Fetchlands, Lily, Gwarf, Cavern, Blood Moon, Inquisition, at Uncommon, it's got Might. Like, what, what did Modern Masters 2015 have? Like, P 
peanuts, like it had peanuts in it, I guess. Like, uh, and then Modern Master 2013, the supply on it made the price go even more. Like it was the exact opposite of what you're trying to achieve, supposedly. But you know, honestly, affording magic cards, the whole point of Modern is to reprint cards. That was why we designed Modern. That's why Modern was designed. Uh, so no one should have been surprised that their cards have dropped in price. No one should be disappointed. This was the entire point of the format. And people forgot that because Wizards of the Coast made it about collectors again. Uh, and that is not how you rode the game. That is not how you get news like ABC, NBC, Forbes magazine talking about this format. They are now called non-magic vendors or non-magic uh, news outlets are talking about this format because they're seeing traffic and they get paid for traffic. Anyway. Bye, guys.